we will come back to the focus to questions of unit uh, 2 which is the, the slide number 2 a little late at uh, that is at 9:40 so, as i said uh, it will be better uh, to discuss with the majority of the students on uh, the points that students has to remember specifically when you are asked to write the solutions or the answers for either two marks part a questions or the long answer questions okay so sometimes uh, you may get the questions which are of very lengthy and uh, um, we, we, we will uh, see what are the points that needs to be remembered okay so can somebody acknowledge whether my voice clarity is good yes sir okay fine so let me start with uh, the extra questions okay so assume that <coughs> number 5 is again copied define an array that is an important question extra this is continuation okay so focus on question number 6 write a c++ function to accept an array and print whether the elements are in sorted form or not so assume that this is asked for two marks okay so what will you do I have started sharing the screen uh, which is a chrome. I hope chrome is also visible. Is chrome is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, I am making a transition between the slide and the chrome. Now is the slide is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, so now is the chrome is visible? Yes, sir. I hope you have the syllabus book with you. Okay, so yes, as I said, uh, we are we are into uh, revision of second unit. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, if you are not able to connect with me, sir. What is the problem? Sorry, sir. What is the problem? I'm I'm not understanding. Uh, don't know. They have been trying to connect, but uh, they are not able to connect. Some message uh, might be coming, no? Whether the password... Unable to connect. Okay, let me Unable check. to uh, connect, they are getting it. Whether I have blocked the meeting or what? Where is that? Okay, so that is... Uh, no, sir. Did I block the meeting? No. So... Maybe you can copy the meeting link. You can go to more and copy the meeting link. And I'm putting it in the chat box also. Okay. Yes, sir. So ask them to click and then connect by using the password which I have sent. Yes, sir. And uh, if the student is unable to join by using the installed app, ask the student to use the web page. Because specifically for uh, those students who are staying at uh, less connectivity or no connectivity regions, uh, connecting to the meeting 
using uh, Chrome is uh, easier or it consumes less uh, less memory than uh, the app. Uh, can somebody acknowledge whether uh, you're able to listen my voice? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So let us uh, proceed with the answers. So assume that uh, now I'm showing the slide. Slide is visible, right? Yes, sir. So print whether the elements are in the sorted form or not. So I assume that this is for uh, two marks. Write a C++ function or write a C++ API to check if the array elements are in ascending order. Okay, so, so the uh, logic is first you notice that the question is not not to write a member function. So it is a function API. Okay, it is a normal function. So assume that you are returning bool. Okay, that means the function checks whether the array elements are in ascending order, yes or no. Okay. So that is true or uh, false. So is in order. Okay. So I'm using a function name uh, whose name is uh, is in order. Okay. Then I need to pass an array. So therefore it is int star. I also need to know how many number of elements. So this is the function prototype. function prototype where the first argument where the first argument is, is the base address of your array okay and the second argument is number of elements okay so then what is the answer i hope uh, the chrome is visible now Uh, am I lost? Is the Chrome is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So is in order. So int star, let us say A is the array. Let us assume N is the total number of uh, records. Okay, so you need to check whether uh, all the elements are in ascending order or not. So it, it's straightforward so it is int i is equal to 0 i is less than n i plus plus so if you find any element such that p of i is uh, greater than p of j so p of i plus 1 p of i is greater than p of i plus 1 but when you do that, uh, you have to repeat up to n minus 1 only. Isn't it? Otherwise, you will get array index out of bounds problem. Because when uh, i becomes uh, n minus 1, when you are trying to fetch e of uh, n, which is illegal. So, therefore, if you are getting a predecessor element which is more than the next element, then you can return false, meaning 0. So if the function, I mean, if all the elements are in order, then you will be, <coughs> you will be coming at the line where the cursor is blinking. So here you can return one. That's it. So this is the answer. Okay. So identification of uh, function name with appropriate list of arguments and its syntax will carry half mark. Logic building will carry one mark and appropriate uh, data type you are using and uh, the syntax or the approach or uh, the segregation that you are doing will carry another uh, half mark. Okay. So 
so there are different logics for example you can count the total number of elements which are there in the setting order and then you can check that uh, whether it is equal to n and then you can return one this is uh, very efficient and it is very fast because the function uh, requirement is to check whether the array elements are in order yes or no okay <clears throat> so if anybody has any points to make you understood this uh, please always be be talking and i may i may lost is my voice is audible yes sir your voice is audible okay so are you clear are you clear about the implementation of the function implementation of the function yes, for this question which is uh, whether the elements are in sorted form or not okay let's take up the next one print whether the elements are in fibonacci form uh, fibonacci form uh, form or not okay so write a c++ function now let me write uh, let me change this member function write a c++ member function to check if the array elements are in fibonacci series wise that this is also for two marks okay yeah i can see students are posting the attendance so use your chat box use the chat box all of you drop your roll numbers uh, let me check the list of participants there are 17 students yes still people are even with even with chrome they are unable to connect with us um ask them to uh, send uh, their uh, mail to you and then you can probably copy that into the chat box so that i can send a direct invitation no no yes sir. means it is it is a problem of connection if, if i am correct uh, whether they are in hyderabad or they are in some remote places I don't think they are in Hyderabad. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I was interrupt. Yeah. Uh, whether those students who are unable to connect, whether they are from Hyderabad? No, I think sir. Okay, so I cannot help them. Now, uh, also please. Do Uh, specifically for your exams uh, it is it is advised you if you are residing at a place where uh, connectivity is uh, not good either you come to directly to college by maintaining the social distance if it is possible and then uh, take the exam by sitting in the computer uh, center or you come closer to some uh, Uh, some town where uh, you don't have the problem of uh, losing the internet and then you take up the internal exam okay <clears throat> okay so there are 19 students who have joined so far so those who have uh, joined please drop your uh, roll number in the chat box okay fine so i think anaga you are saying something something related to the question or uh, related to the connection yeah connection is i think i am clear okay yes uh can you able to hear my voice yes sir okay so i hope everybody had the breakfast please always be interactive otherwise it will be like uh, a monopoly that means only one way transmission fine so let us uh, take up the second next question which is 
write a C++ uh, member function. Assume that you are asked to write a C++ member function to check if the array elements are in Fibonacci order. Okay. So now this is where uh, uh, I would like to discuss the approach. Okay. So you cannot starting from hash include iostream.h till uh, get ch because it's a two marks question. Okay, so the answer should be you have to assume to assume that there is a class whose class name is something. Something is sample. I am, I am taking it as a sample and assume that in private data member in private you have an array. Since no other uh, restrictions are given for the data so you take a static array. Okay. Now you also need to know number of elements. So let us take that as NTN. Next, public. Okay, so in this public, you have uh, you don't have to again uh, you don't have to again write the entire class definition. You write some dot 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 and then then what has been asked. Okay, so is is in fib is the array is in Fibonacci series. So because you can access the array A without any, without passing any object, uh, sorry, without passing any argument, you can simply write void. Okay. So then again, you define the data type as bool. So this is called problem, problem analysis. And then the, the problem design okay or the solution design so after this so this is something like uh, you write uh, let x be the solution for your mathematics so similarly let sample be a c++ class such that such that you write all this okay and now you start writing the function definition which is a member function so the return type is bool it is defined in sample it is defined in sample scope okay is in fib void right so in fibonacci series first two terms you have to ignore first two terms you have to ignore so what will you do you take uh, probably int first is equal to a of 0 second is equal to a of 1 so first and second are uh, done then you have to find the third element such that third element is equal to first plus second then it is in order otherwise it is not in order so that means what for int i is equal to 0 1 is already done so 2 is uh, less than n i plus plus okay so if if first plus second so what is first plus second if first plus second if it is not equal to if it is not equal to e of i if it is not equal to e of i then it is not in Fibonacci order. So then you return zero. Then you return zero. Otherwise, you return one. So your problem decomposition from line number two to line number twelve will carry one mark. And your implementation from line number fourteen to line number twenty-three will carry another uh, one mark. Writing main is optional. However, if you have time probably you can write saying that it is void main of void so somewhere uh, you are creating let us say your sample is the class name and then let us say s1 is the object so again you write dot 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 then you use s1 dot s1 dot what is it is is in fib of so if if this is true if this is true, then you can say C out 
it's in Fibonacci. It's in Fibonacci. otherwise. Otherwise, see out it. It's not in Fibonacci. Write dot dot dot, and then close. So this will be the solution. Specifically, if the same question is being asked as a member function, for let us say for uh, four marks. Okay. Sir. Yes. In the function, we should change uh, first and second also, okay, no, sir. Yeah, in yeah, for that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. So every time when you are uh, moving back. Uh, uh, what is that? Your uh, first will become second. Your second will now become your five. And you do this only when you are not returning. First will be second. Second will be your five. Is that correct? Is that correct? I think somebody has pointed. Is it sure? Uh -huh. Okay, so please also uh, focus on the aspects that I am specifically insisting on the problem decomposition. Okay, so there could be um cases where a larger problem can be given and you will be asked to write something like a piece of code so if it is the case then you have to address or you have to specifically concentrate on whatever question is being asked so what is there which is projected on your uh, screen in front of your eyes is an example so you don't have to write the entire uh, c++ program instead you assume that there is a class and it's been asked to define a member function. So write the complete member function, which is uh, error free or bug free. And then uh, writing main is optional. If it is for two marks, there is no need of writing main. If it is for four marks, then you can probably write main like this. Okay. Anybody has any points to make? Uh, please talk to me, otherwise I am getting a feel that I am not connected because I am using 4G now, I am not connected with Wi-Fi. Hello. Hello, can you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Sir. Mm, okay. Please talk to me, always talk to me. Okay, so maybe you can, uh, some of you can take a lead for the next question. Shall we proceed to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, uh, return the starting index of it. Return the starting index of the array from where the elements are found in ascending order. That is the longest, largest. So I'll take an example. The example of this problem is, I think now it is 940. So let me let me go back to uh, the fundamentals before we dig into the uh, the other problems. Let me check the list of participants. 24 list of participants. Fine. Did the students who had the problems have connected? I think Manohar had a problem. No, sir. Did they connect it? Uh, Anagha, can you respond? You are saying some students were unable to connect. Um, most of them connected, but few still have the problems. Who are they? Pavan Kalyan said he had a problem. Pavan Kalyan 17. No, not 17. 24. 24, okay. And uh, Pratibha. Pratibha, okay. Uh, 
fine it's okay so at least one or two students have connected yes sir okay fine bamsi also sir bamsi 57 ha huh? 57 okay 58 bamsi is present okay fine so maybe i suggest uh, for these students to go through the recording once or the post the class after the class okay so sneha i think she is not there uh, and shivateja shivateja okay shivateja shubhasai why there is a problem i didn't uh, ask for the registration it's a direct uh, connection only did any of like, yeah uh, while joining uh, it is showing that it is getting connected Mm. for long it is not getting connected there that means there is a connectivity issue did any... maybe there is some issue with the app today okay so did any of you had a problem when you were uh, logged yeah. in yes sir when even when i was logging in it showed connecting for a long time then it got connected mm. okay fine anyway uh again as i said uh, i hope the recording of this lecture may probably help the students who are unable to connect so as i said in today's revision class i told to the students who have joined uh, earlier that i will be discussing some of the points that you have to keep in mind as the series of steps specifically when you are uh, writing the solutions in the external exams so notice that for the questions whatever has been asked in the external exams it could be a simple straightforward questions for example implement a bubble chart nothing else assume that you got a question saying that implement a bubble chart in c++ okay so on the other hand you got a another uh, same uh, same logic based question something like uh, assume that uh, assume that a student has uh, or, or a player has played uh, a different different innings in a cricket match and uh, uh, where uh, that player is a bowler and you construct a function uh, that will that will sort the number of wickets i mean the innings based number of wickets in the descending order or in ascending order using bubble sort so for questions like this uh, you always first try to understand the problem and narrate or uh, bring down the solution into the different steps so what is important is first of all is the, uh, ability of the student to convert the real life problem into a c++ uh, class okay so if in the question it is not mentioned that you implement by using a member function or by using an object in main okay so you can you are, you are welcome to take uh, a normal uh, c++ uh, program without a class okay or sorry uh, you can take uh, a normal c++ program without a class using main right so always first step is understand the problem and decompose the problem into the uh, technical aspect being asked in the question understand that first okay now the second point is you map your answer that you have decomposed into the marks for example if it is for two marks if it is for four marks if it is for uh, let us say eight marks okay so if it is for 8 marks then you have to write the entire solution if it is for 2 marks then only the logic part i think i have given a couple of examples right now and if it is for 3 marks or if it is for 4 marks in between then the pseudo code here and there can be written and then the logic which is been uh, expected has to be written completely okay so these are uh, some of the content uh, some of the points that everybody has to remember i hope uh, you are getting my points did you understood what i have told
please talk to me i am not getting any audio always use audio i think i am lost yes sir yes sir yeah uh, is is my signal is getting interrupted are you getting the no sir no no sir then please talk to me okay always talk to me okay okay yes 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 sir no please say yes sir no yes sir mm, okay okay fine so let us uh, go back to our uh, discussions on 1d array basics what is the definition of an array it is a collection of similar data items which are grouped together under a single tag name it is a collection of similar data items which are grouped together under a single tag name are the collection of homogeneous data elements that specify the same property and which are grouped under the single tag name is called as an array then we have looked in what is the declaration of an array and then you define the array subscript okay so here one of the common mistakes done by the students is i think i have explained in the class but still it is better to reproduce so don't don't declare don't declare the arrays something like this let me use the code that will be better so let me delete all this so assume that uh, you write int a of i or int a of n initially you say that int n is equal to 10 Okay. So later versions of the compiler, which are uh, released after uh, C ninety nine, if I am correct, which is C plus plus ninety nine, dynamic array instantiation is allowed. However, it is not advisable to declare a static array like this. Don't declare a static array with a variable index. Don't declare a static array with a variable index. It is not acceptable. This is mistake number one. Don't do that. Don't do this. Then second, uh, writing a loop starting from i is equal to uh, zero and then mistakenly writing i is less than or equal to n. Error. Don't do this. Okay. So similarly, don't do for i is equal to one. Don't start from one. Don't start from one, and don't write i is less than less than n or less than or equal to n. Okay, so remember that you uh, you have to declare the array, saying that int a of let us say max. And another point is whenever you use a constant, which is uh, the which is for the declaration of a static array, always use uppercase. Always use uppercase. Better better coding. so then you define a uh, max probably 10 don't write equal to here don't write semicolon right so this is a primary macro which is hash defined and then int a of max so i assume that you are asked to initialize it with zero so you initialize it with zero like this okay then when you are indexing the array elements you have to start from i is equal to 0 i is less than n and then i plus plus so these are uh, some of the points which i am again repeating that should not be done these are extremely serious bugs uh, serious mistakes okay so assume that you are asking to accept the n elements then you write uh, c out Enter a of i. 
okay equal to then c in t of i right so you can probably write a of i plus 1 but uh, ne nevertheless i advise you follow with i only okay and whenever you are accessing the array elements you have to use the for loop starting from always 0 to 0 to uh, n only that means you have a total elements starting from 0 to n minus 1 where 0 uh, a of 0 is the first element so i hope all these points which i have repeated are clear and if anybody has any doubts you can raise now and most importantly uh, understand the problem first. understand the problem so once you have understood the problem you try to decompose okay so you try to arrive at the strategy of uh, converting your uh, converting the problem into a logic then after decomposing you then you map you map with what map with the marks being asked okay so the question is stress, stressing about what has to be reflected uh, the question is stressing about what has to be analyzed. The emphasis has to be given only on that. Okay. So if there exists a need to make use of some other added language specific properties for answering the decomposed mapped logic, you are welcome to write the pseudocodes. Okay. So examples of the pseudocodes I have just illustrated. Like there is no need to write the entire program. So whatever is being asked, uh, in order to come up with that logic, whatever extra uh, extra technical uh, other inputs are required, you assume. For example, class name, then the object in main, and then the uh, variables. You have to assume. Okay. I hope these points are clear. Is it clear? Are these points are clear? Uh. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Who is this? I think it is Kirti, right? Okay. Uh. Fine. So let us. Uh, go back to this some of the standard questions that you can get in uh, 1d arrays are the sorting and searching and similarly finding the biggest and the smallest or a 1d array can be given and you may be asked to find the mean variance and the standard devi uh, standard uh, deviation okay and you may be asked i think these four uh, i don't need to repeat you want me to repeat i think we have done enough examples Bubble search, and search, linear search, binary search, finding the biggest, finding the smallest, and then finding the mean, and then variance, and then standard deviation. Standard devi deviation. Okay, and the same problem can also be asked with the dynamic array, and also the same problem can also be asked with a pointer to an object. So at that time, uh, you have to take the arrow operator for question number four. Okay, uh, now concentrate on five. Uh, assume that you are asked to find how many items are more than K and how many items are more than L and how many items are in between K and L. Okay, so let us do this. Maybe I'll ask one of the student, you, you please uh, proceed with the answer. Uh, yes, Kirti, can you proceed? Yeah, Pratibha has joined. She had a problem. Fine. Uh, those students who have joined, make ensure that you are dropping your roll numbers. There are 31 students now. Fine. So let, let me take up the problem. Let me take up the problem. The requirement is you are asked to find the total number of items which are more than K, which are more than L and which are in between K and L and assume that it is for two marks. How do you do this?
write C plus plus member function to find and print number of elements which are more than n, which are more than k, I think, right? Which are more than k, which are more than l, and which are in between. How do you do this? And assume that this is for two marks. Yes, uh, what has happened? If I am audible, you have to talk. If you are not talking, then something is wrong. Either the connection. Yes, sir. Okay. So how do you how, how do you solve? So instead of member function, let me take it as a function now, and then I'll convert this function into member function in the same uh, for the same problem. Assume that you are asked to write a C plus plus function to find and print the number of elements which are with this but the problem is still incomplete uh, write a c++ function to find and print the number of elements which are more than k l and in between in in an array of n elements n integer elements Okay, so how do you solve this? So notice that in a single function, the question is to return three numbers. Can anybody answer the question? Is my voice is uh, audible? I think something is. Uh, yes, sir. Anagha, you are. Sir, should I say the def? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think Kirti, yes. Is the definition? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead uh, with the prototype first. Void print. Void, uh, okay. Say do count. Print. Okay, do count. Uh, no, no, assume that. Uh, one minute, one minute. I think you are trying to print inside only. Uh, write a C++ function to find and return. I, I, I want all the three numbers to be returned. And return the number of elements which are more than K, which are more than L, and which are in between K and L. And the assumption is, since in the question is not given, assume that K is less than L. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm, yeah, go ahead. Then return type would be an array. Mm, in star. Will be an array. But if you return an array, then, uh, where will you consider? We should also array? pass the same array. So that means you have to pass the same array when you give the same answer. That will be a part of your argument. So therefore, the return type will be still void only. Isn't it? Okay. So, okay. Sir. First, first element will be the array. Second element yes, will be ten. our answer array. And element in is ten. int uh, n, small n, and then I need uh, I also need to take uh, k and l. K and l. K and then int l. L. L looks little odd, so I'll take p. Typing, you will get it as one. SP. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, int i. Yeah. For i is equal to zero. Int i equal to i less than n. N. I plus plus. Yeah. And we so, should also consider some more variables. No. Uh, why not required? For count. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is this is a prototype, right? And me. Yes. Sir. Yeah. This is a prototype. 
What happened, Kirti? You are running. You are running and attending the class. No, sir. Okay. No, I could able to sense uh, your breathing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, this is what this is function uh, prototype. Okay, now coming to function definition. So in function prototype, we are assuming that the first argument is yes. Array. Yeah. First argument is the array. Let us say that is the array. Now second argument is the answer array. And third and fourth, uh, they are implied. Third is uh, number of elements. A is K and P is P. What he has asked. Okay, so now, uh, now what? Now notice that you don't have to construct the answer uh, memory because you are already assuming that you are passing the base address of your answer. So construction of answer is the headache in main. Okay, so you don't have to worry about construction of this second fellow. So therefore, what has to be incremented also is known to you. So you don't require any additional variables. Okay. Yes, sir. Now let we us, have to uh, initialize up... with zero in the main. Yeah, yeah. So that is correct. So what we will do is uh, we will take uh, int star a, which is an array. Let us take int answer, which is the answer array. Okay. So, so we also know that uh, you are constructing the answer with three elements. So answer of zero and then answer of uh, one. And then answer of two, they are all initialized it to zero. Okay, and we are assuming that in answer of zero, you are maintaining the elements which are greater than k, but are less than less than uh, no no greater than k. Total number of elements which are greater than k is in answer zero. Now in answer of one, you are maintaining total elements which are greater than p. Greater than yeah, and then in answer of uh, 2, you will have the elements which are in between P and P and K. Mm, Greater yeah. than K and less than. Yeah. Okay, so you put this in the uh, logic. That means we are assuming that K is uh, less than P. K is less than P. So if A of A of I, I is uh, greater, greater than, than K. K yeah, greater than k. Answer of 0 plus plus. Answer of 0 plus plus. Okay. Now don't write if. else if. Don't write else if. Directly yeah. you write if only. If. If a of, a of I, I. Greater than p. A of i is greater than p. Answer of 1 answer plus of plus. 1 plus plus. Now, if if a of i less than or equal to k, if a of double a is less than, don't keep equal to, because equal to let, okay. here. let us keep equal to here. Okay. So if a of i is less than, uh, no, not less than, it should be greater than right? It should be greater than k. And double n a of i a of i is uh, less than p. less than p. Answer, answer of 2 plus plus. plus, plus. That's, it. That's it. Okay, so what is important is how will you uh, decompose the or how will you come up to a logic where, uh, which is being addressed as the requirement. Okay, so rest of the other things like uh, uh, writing, writing the answer in, in main is not required. But uh, you need to clearly indicate that uh, the first argument is what, second argument is what. Of course, if you take the meaningful uh, formal variables, it is implied that you are taking answer. And moreover, the order of the arguments is also immaterial. But when you have written a function prototype, in the same order, you have to write the function definition. Okay. Right. Let us go to the next problem. 
एक्सक्यूज मी सर या या गो अहेड एनीबॉडी हैज एनी डाउट्स यस गो अहेड सर इन द क्वेश्चन इट इज सेड लाइक इट इज सेड दैट द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इज इन दैट मीन्स द नंबर्स मोर देन के और पी so uh, you i couldn't that, able to that, that, understand your uh, voice is getting breaks yes sir i'll put it in chat sir no no no, no. now it is audible yeah. now you tell in the place where you are you okay sir like like statue ah uh, yeah go ahead okay sir sir in the question more than k or p hmm more than p is one so element it... more than more than p is another value and in between k and p is another value hmm. yes so isn't that mean that uh, more than k or more than p, uh, p doesn't mean that uh, the number of times the element is repeated sir no 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 more than the value uh, oh, i'm getting why why repetition is coming here how many times uh, the element is getting repeated that is not the question right how many elements are greater than yes oh okay more than uh, what i mean by is greater than the value value which is greater than okay sir thank you sir okay yeah i think you are catching some of the english mistakes yes. here yeah go ahead yes, sir i understood the question in that way sir uh yeah yeah go ahead one of you yes hmm Sir, only greater than k, sir. Not greater than or equal to. Hmm. Okay. Fine. Greater than k. Okay, fine. Greater than p. Okay. Agreed. Yes, sir. Anything else? Done. Okay. Next. Anybody else has any problem? Uh, any any doubts? Fine. Next. Insert or delete an item at kth index. Okay, so insert or delete an item at kth index where k is from zero to m minus one such that m is less than n. Anyway, this is only for analysis part I have written. So assume that you are asked to write. Oh, I I I think I said uh, I'll be converting this uh, program as a member function. Okay, so let me deal with this. Going back to the same problem. Okay. so if you are asked to convert this as a member function let us say this is for four marks okay then what you have to do is you define a class let us say sample and then you define the data so private int let us say a of max so that means you don't have to pass this fellow don't have to pass this fellow right here and then you don't have to pass n okay so int n now you write hash define max here hash define max 10 and notice that it can have additional data members just write dot 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 and then under public access specifier you keep now this fellow okay now this is your answer array now you don't need this fellow because n is not required other two elements are required which are nothing but k and p clear clear next this is dot 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 again now now you concentrate on main can somebody acknowledge am i are you able to reach my voice listen me can you able to listen yes, sir okay so next create a sample let us say sample s1 yes, then dot 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 then what you need the answer so now here you cannot say that uh, uh, i mean you have two options option 1 you create a static array directly create a static array meaning 
uh, what is it? Uh, and int, let us say, answer of three. Okay. And here itself, you initialize this to zero. So if you do this, then this part is not necessary. This part is not necessary. I'm just committing it. Here. Okay. R. You can also use star answer equal to new end of three dynamic where we are creating answer at runtime maybe question can be asked with runtime okay now what now what you need to you need to call this fellow which fellow do count how do you call how do you call s1 dot s1 dot uh, what is it do do count do count of you have to pass answer you have to pass now accept p and q uh, what is it uh, accept k and then p so see out values of k and p then c in take that into k take that into p now declare those two fellows okay uh, since you are representing this separately so after declaration either this or this you write int k comma p here what s1 dot do count of answer comma k comma p and then see out see out what the number of elements which are greater than which are greater than k are are answer of zero. Uh, am I connected? Are you following? Yes, sir. Okay. Next. Next, what? Number of elements which are greater than P are answer of one. Then the number of elements which are that are in between K and P are answer of two. Okay. And finally, if you have used this static array you don't need any additional statement if you are asked to use a dynamic array then you delete delete of answer this is if answer is at runtime and then it can still continue dot 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 now coming to member function is returning void it is in sample This is how you have to do. I hope you are following. If anybody has any doubts, anybody need clarity, you can get back to me now. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Mm, okay. So, any doubts? Anybody has any doubts? Uh, 
hello what happened you are not talking if you are listening you please talk to me no sir okay fine let us uh, go to the next question you are asked to insert and delete the kth index i think this you can do can i skip this shall i skip this yes sir okay so next uh, next uh, some of the other logics print whether the elements are uh, in sorted form or not just now i discussed at the beginning of the class those who have joined late can uh, watch the uh, class later similarly fibonacci is also completed then return the starting index from where the elements are in longest ascending order so how do you do this uh, before that let me let, let, let me take up the problems with recursion first so assume that you are asked to print the elements using recursion yes how do you do we delete all this shall i delete yes sir okay so write a c++ function to accept an array and print the elements using recursion How do you do? Yes. Anybody in the class? How do you do? Sir, instead of that uh, for loop, we should increment i, sir. Tell me, how do you do? Tell me the answer. Yes, anybody? In star a comma in ten. Hmm. And then um, inside the function in i is equal to zero. Mm. If i is greater than equal to n, return. If i is greater than equal to n. That means i has to be static. Yeah, static. Mm. This is important. Mm. So if i is greater than equal to n. Greater than or equal to n. Okay. Then return. Hmm. C out a of i. Hmm. I plus plus. Hmm. And then do print of a of i comma n and a of i. Do print of a of and a of i comma n. A of i will become value, but what you have to pass is the address. Address so and a of i. Okay, so you will pass address of a of i. Comma n. Comma n. Okay. Yes. Anybody? Is it correct? Let us test it now itself. Yes. We can pass A, no, sir. Yeah, you can pass A, but when you pass A, you have to you have to pass the next element. How do you do that? All right, right. You are. You can pass A. Because anyway, I is uh, getting. Are incrementing. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. Fine. Okay. Using namespace std. Now this 
Hello needs in. Let us say a of max. Let me directly take some uh, values: two, four, six, three, five, nine. Okay. So let me write hash define max as ten. Now I want do print of uh, a comma. Uh, 10. Anyway, other elements will become 0, isn't it? Okay. And then I will return. So, will it print the elements? Let us check. Yeah, it is 2, 4, 6, 3, 5, 9, all zeros. Okay, so assume that you are uh, asked to print the elements in uh, reverse. Maybe you can keep uh, a slash t. Okay, so two, four, six, three, five, nine, one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 4, 10. Okay. Clear? Any other logic? Just for printing in reverse order, we have to call mm. the function converse and then we have to print now, sir. Mm. Yes. Writing C out statement at last, sir. Yeah. So simply convert, uh, remove this and then keep this. Will it work? Check it out. I is equal to 0, i plus plus, it becomes uh, 1. It becomes 1, you are not returning. And printing is still pending. So now you are printing in reverse. Now let us, we will get first four elements as zeros. The other elements, something is wrong. It will not be printed. Because i is getting yeah, incremented. Yeah, yeah, i is getting incremented. Mm, okay, so how do you do this? Yes, how do you do this? Assume that you are asked to print the array elements in reverse using recursion. Recursion and then incrementing i plus plus. Mm, come again. First function call, sir, then incrementing of i. First is function call. Then you increment i plus plus. In that case, i becomes zero. Uh, now again you are entering. Again you are entering. It becomes infinite loop, right? It becomes infinite loop. Can take i equal to minus one and then start. I equal to minus one. And uh, i plus plus then function call. I plus then function call. I plus plus and then function call. What is the difference between this and the earlier? It will be zero after incrementing and a of it will i be will zero. be zero. Okay, a of i will be zero. Then again, a of uh, i plus one, which is the second element. Then third, fourth, fifth. Okay, let us test it. Still you are getting zeros. Why are you getting zeros here? Sir, because i will be incremented to the maximum, no sir. I mean, till n it will get incremented. But whatever was the previous value of a of i, it has to be printed, right? Yeah, we are printing a of i. So from the top, when it is printing, i will be n. I mean, okay, n okay. One. So n minus one. No, no, not n minus one. I will be initially zero. So it is printing all a of zero elements. 
let us do one more so what i will do is uh, uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll get all twenties. No zero. Okay. Zero. How are you getting zero here? Okay, I is equal to minus. You are printing a do print a comma n. Now my point is, how are you getting zero? It should get some value, right? Is becoming ten, no sir. Which is becoming ten. Like I is becoming n, i. Yeah, yeah, i is. I is becoming yeah. n. A of a of n will be zero, no sir. It is not declared. No, a, it is declared. If n is ten, no. It is declared as twenty. A of nine. A of it nine is twenty, no. Okay, if it is uh, greater than equal to is coming. Okay, fine. Now. Otherwise, it has to return, right? Sir, a of i is greater than n minus one. Greater Here than or equal to n minus. I greater than or equal to n minus one. I is greater than or equal to. Yeah, that is nothing but i is greater than n. Okay, change it. Greater than or equal. Equal to, to n minus. Ah, yes, sir. Both are same, no? I is greater than or equal to n minus one is same as i is greater than n. Still, I'll get zeros only. Oh, one minute. Get twenty, sir. Difference between this and oh, okay, okay. Next time, yen. Okay, yen. We are not changing. If i is greater than or equal to n minus one. If i is greater than yen, they are not same. Why they are not same? Yes, yes. Anybody, please come. Sir, it returns at n minus one. Greater than n minus. Sir, one. if you put i less, if it is e greater than or equal to n minus one, it returns at n minus one, no sir. But here. It returns at n minus one. Okay. It returns at n when i becomes. No, no, no. When when I write i is uh, greater than n, it is. Is it not same as i is greater than greater than or equal to n minus one? You are incrementing i. I is becoming from zero. I you are starting from zero. Are you starting from zero? No. You are starting from minus one. Okay. You are starting from minus one. I plus plus becomes uh, one. Sorry. sorry. A of zero printing is still pending, and then you are uh, making a jump. When you are jumping, hmm, when you are jumping, always you are taking uh, uh, n. So what you can do is take another variable int so, static int i. No, 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 not static. Uh, int x. Other variable int x. Now you pass i. You pass i. Okay. So only when i becomes n, then you return. Only when i becomes n, then you return. You initialize 
i is equal to zero. Okay, so you increment i plus plus, then you start printing a of i. You start printing a of i. Sir, there. Hmm? Sir, yes. sir, if i is greater than zero, then increment i. I is greater than zero. Anyway, then increment i. It, it is okay. I is always greater than zero only. I don't need that uh, statement, right? I can directly increment i plus plus. Okay, okay. There is a function mismatch. Okay, so I have to write int here. Now, when you are uh, first time, when you are calling this at the first time, x has to be zero. What are you taking with x? Uh, i is equal to static int i is equal to zero, and then you need to initialize i with x. Every time x has to change, uh, sorry, i has to change. Now I think it will work. Zero. Yes, anybody? Take the variable and then uh, if a is equal to n minus 1, what has to be printed is a of x. One seven nine five three six four two. It is missing. Okay, two, three, four. Okay. Check it out now. This is the answer. And are you connected? Are you able to follow? Yes, sir. And able to shout, I'm having little throat infection. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Mm. May explain uh, you are passing the base address, taking the size of the array as the second element, then you are starting from x is equal to 0. You are initializing static i is equal to 0 for moving the index. Always i is equal to next element that needs to be printed, i is equal to x. And if both are same, then there is no element to print. Otherwise, you increment and you call with the updated value of i. And while you are returning, printing of a of x is pending. So if you don't copy this into x, then the value of i will be same even when you return. That was the problem earlier. Whether you are getting the first element, which is all zeros, sorry, which is all, I think, uh, 20, or you are getting the, sorry, First element. Uh, earlier example, it was zero, or it was the last element, which is always twenty. So to avoid that, you should not print a static variable index. Okay, so you have to take a non-static variable index of your array, and then you have to print. Clear? Yes, sir. Fine. Next is assume that you are asked to do bubble sort using recursion. Yes, how do you do? How do you do? Why to 
C plus plus function to do bubble sort using recursion. So you already have the array. Okay, so here you print after the function call. This is do bubble. passing a and then 10 okay so this function needs to be written so after performing the bubble sort to start printing and i is equal to 0 i is less than 10 and then i plus plus so see out this is after sorting before sorting i am not printing because we already have to the array Yes, anybody? So what has to be done? Uh, let us take the bubble start that is void do bubble int star. We'll get the size of the element. Uh, size of the array which is int uh, sorry which is uh, n so let us take this uh, member function and let, let us try to construct the logic uh, notice that in bubble sort for every iteration which element will be fixed either the first one or the last one last one right last one or the last one one or the last one first one or the last one last one hmm, last one <clears throat> now what i comma j I double equal to mm. and then return static int i is equal to zero. So if uh, i is double equal to n, then return. Then return. Okay. Otherwise, sir, before we have to declare j and uh, yeah, yeah, for int j is equal to 0, j is less than n minus, uh, minus. Plus i minus 1. J plus plus. J plus plus. You have to plus. check whom and whom. You have to check whom and whom. Y of i and y of j. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, no. Y of uh, j and y of j plus 1. Bubble. It is bubble. J plus 1, sir. Of j, of j if it is greater than a of j plus one, then what? A of j temp equal to a of j. Yeah, this is swapping. And then a yes, of j a is a equal to a of, a of j plus one. And a of, a of j plus one equal to temp. Then you have to make a function after this function uh, before doing function call you have to increment the value of uh, i plus so you do i plus plus then you again call do bubble do bubble a comma n a comma n will it work you are incrementing i until it becomes n inner loop you are doing that is the checking j is always 0 to n minus i minus 1 okay. so let us print it yeah that is correct okay. clear sir 
can we have nested recursion yeah you can and there is a concept of indirect recursion also i think i explained uh, yesterday to some other class section c okay so just go through the recorded lecture of uh, section c yesterday's class you said something what is that uh, nested recursion what do you mean by nested recursion calling a recursion inside a recursion yes it can be done example example is uh, fibonacci if you look at the fibonacci logic with recursion uh, you are calling in fib of x fib of x minus 1 and also fib of x minus 2 that is nothing but uh, nested recursion so even without executing or even without completing f of n you are asking to fetch the value of f of x minus 1 by reaching the base value and also f of x minus 2 so that is an example of nested recursion okay i got an interrupt uh, i have another class at 11 o'clock so let me stop here so i advise all of you please go through the other uh, problems which i have stated and subsequently also work on uh, the 2d arrays okay and uh, next class we'll uh, take up unit 3 specifically with uh, constructor overloading and operator overloading. okay yes sir fine so let me stop do you need the recording of this yes sir okay because i don't know whether because i have to immediately start a class at 11 uh, if the buffering happens then i'll share otherwise i may not be in a position okay so let me stop recording